Good morning, and welcome to the sixth annual Montgomery College Single Parent Conference. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your Saturday morning to join us at our third virtual conference. I believe that you will benefit from the committee members' hard work in planning a new conference experience. I'd like to share a little bit about the committee members. There are 11 individuals from the various departments at Montgomery College, Career Catchers, Department of Health and Human Services, the City of Gaithersburg, Head Start, HOC Fatherhood Initiative, and HOC Academy. Of course, the financial support we receive is paramount in making it possible to offer this event at no cost to you. This year's conference is again sponsored by United Bank, and we have a new sponsor, Montgomery County African American Health Program. You may notice that the conference is a little different from the previous five conferences. We are featuring a dynamic keynote speaker, Wes Watkins, and two panel discussions with experts in the field of parenting and communication. You will be provided an opportunity to ask questions of the experts and get sage advice. A little bit about our sponsors. United Bank has been a sponsor of the conference since it began in 2017. Not only have they donated $20,000, but they have also provided workshops and served as an exhibitor. We are grateful that United Bank continued to support the conference during this challenging time. Montgomery County African American Health Program made it possible for the conference to have airtime on local radio stations, hopefully reaching a new population of parents. A big thank you to United Bank and Montgomery County African American Health Program for supporting the efforts of the Montgomery College Single Parent Conference. We hope that you are inspired by our keynote speaker and informed by our panelists. Again, thank you for joining us. We now have a welcome from Monica Brown to be followed by a welcome from the new Montgomery College president, Dr. Jim Rain Williams. Dr. Brown began her career at Montgomery College nearly 20 years ago. Actually, she'll celebrate her 20th anniversary next year. And, and she started in the position as campus and community coordinator. Dr. Brown was appointed as the college's senior vice president for student affairs in, two, in June, 2015. Also, you should know that Dr. Brown is the supervisor of my supervisor. So please uh, <laughs> welcome her warmly and thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you, Beverly, and great morning, all. It's wonderful to be here with you uh, again this year for this fantastic conference. And what a beautiful day it is. Um, we so appreciate that you decided to join us here, and we appreciate your participation in this single parent conference. It is appreciated so very much because you have so many uh, choices about how you spend your time and the, the fact that you have uh, agreed to join us here today is phenomenal. It is my great honor to introduce our president, Dr. Jermaine Williams. Dr. Williams became the 11th president of Montgomery College in February of this year. He has embraced the values of access, diversity, equity, inclusion, student success, and post-secondary success for all. He understands that achieving these values will take expertise, resources, and partnerships from the community with people just like you. As the father of two children, Dr. Williams knows firsthand the complexities of raising children in the 21st century and wants to make sure that Montgomery College is a welcoming environment for fathers, mothers, grandparents, and guardians of all sorts pursuing their education. So if you would please join me in giving a warm welcome to our president, Dr. Jermaine Williams. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Beverly Coleman, for organizing this wonderful conference and webinar. Thank you, everyone, for being here this Saturday. What a, what a great Saturday it is. 
Um, to the particip participants, welcome, welcome, welcome to Montgomery College. I'm so pleased you have chosen to be here and participate today. The college's support of students who are also parents is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, as you heard. Um, first, I'm a father of two children, a 10-year-old and a five-year-old. So I'm living the, the work-life management situation myself, uh, day in and, and, and day out. Uh, one of my sisters was also parenting while in school. So I, I got to see up close, um, you know, how challenging that could be from time to time. And I also got to see up close, you know, um, the, the level of, <laughs> excuse me, <clears throat> the level of excitement that she had through her experience and what she brought as a parenting student to the educational experience that individuals can learn from her. So that's one thing that I'd be remiss if I, if I didn't share is the benefit that we experience, you know, in our educational sphere from embracing students who are our parenting. So um, it was a, a fantastic time as I, I helped her through her educational career by uh, babysitting my nieces and nephews and doing other, other things that occur um, that we need as parents. And we know that through decades of student success initiatives, you know, it's really been illustrated that meeting students where they are and changing our policies, our procedures and our strategies to be more student-centered can enhance the student experience. And that's one of the, the many reasons that I'm so excited to be president of, of Montgomery College because we take an, an, an internal look, right? We, we listen and we're trying to identify how can we be more student-centered? We know that students are navigating time management, basic needs, insecurities, uh, degree planning among several other facets of their lives. And, and, and many students, they balance their academic dreams with parenting and their journeys can at times be more and or differently complex than, than, than some other students. So parents who have access to supports that serve their specific needs improve their chances of success, right? Um, and that's what we're dedicated to at Montgomery College and improving the, the chances and helping to ensure success. So that's why we host events like this one. And as you heard, and I, I got to know, um, this is our, our sixth year, this annual event, third being virtual, and it's been growing and growing and popularity. And as you'll see, I'm, I'm really excited. I had a, an opportunity um, to actually meet with a group of parenting students over the summer. Yeah, I think you'll see a short video clip uh, in a few moments. And, and we had a fantastic conversation. The dialogue was, was wonderful. Um, you know, I shared a few ways that the college has been making itself into a family-friendly institution. I'm going to, um, you know, communicate a couple of those that, you know, we have uh, lactation stations on each campus for nursing mothers, special parking for, for families, high chairs in the cafeterias for young children, um, installing 58 baby changing tables, you know, throughout our campuses. So these are just a, a few of the very practical supports that the college is embracing. The, the bigger picture, the bigger picture though, is that there are many people in our community raising children, right? You know, these individuals and families need education urgently, right? And oftentimes that education is needed to improve their employment potential and earn a wage that sustains their family. So creating an environment that acknowledges, you know, the, the challenges and opportunities of raising children while being enrolled in college is, is salient. That's, again, why we're here today. Modeling post-secondary education for children is, is also a powerful influence that parents can have on, on their own child's likelihood of a successful collegiate experience. And I, I know and I, re, I reflect back being a, a first generation uh, college student, I had um, lots of opportunities as I'm sure so many of us here today did. And I can, I can tell you from experience that, you know, seeing your parent dedicated and, and deeply engaged in education makes an, an indelible mark. And I gotta say that speaking from, from experience. And as I, as I close, I'd like to reinforce um, just uh, one of the sentiments that you heard from, from Dr. Brown. And at MC, we, we talk a lot about equity, diversity, and inclusion, right? and taking an appropriate look 
at what parents need to be successful students is an extension of that. So not only do we talk about equity, diversity, and inclusion, but we take action. You know, and that's why we have Montgomery College Ascend a Parent Initiative. Um, and the uh, College Ascend Parent Initiative, you know, a couple of the items, you know, helps to identify the most critical needs of the parenting student population, helps to uh, assess the state of our current supports to parenting students, right? So that we can dive in and see what it is that we're doing that's working. Um, and, and what our opportunities are for providing more equitable support. And, and lastly, I'll share about the uh, Montgomery College Ascend Parent Initiative is it explores opportunities to improve services to, to parent students. You know, after we've done that assessment and after we've done the, the dive is how, how do we move forward? How do we continue to enhance equitable opportunities for our parenting students and ensure that there is a, a sense of belonging, ensure that our students know that this is an educational home, their educational home, where there are individuals who not only know and believe they can succeed, but also provide the equitable supports to ensure that they do succeed and excel. And I, you know, as you can see, um, I just, um, there's so many people that are here today. This is um, something we care deeply about holistically supporting our students. I truly hope you enjoy today's webinar and that it inspires you to carve a path for yourself and your children. Um, hopefully it will involve Montgomery College. And um, again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Beverly Coleman. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to the rest of our experience today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brown. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for your warm welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Brown, uh, Williams, for your commitment to student parents, and uh, as well as Dr. Brown, both of you have demonstrated a commitment to that, and therefore that means you're committing to the parents that are joining us today, um, and we are grateful for that. Um, I will now turn it over to our Master of Ceremony, the incomparable Mr. James Worthy. Thank you, Mr. Worthy. Well, thank you so much, Beverly. I truly appreciate that welcome. And to everyone here today, thank you for being with us. I'm very excited. And we have a power packed uh, couple of hours to share some information with everyone. And I'm so honored to be here. Um, James Worthy has been a person for almost the last three decades to really focus on supporting families from a, a responsible fatherhood side. And during this 30 years of work, I've just understood that co-parenting and communication and really understanding the plight of a single parent has been uh, paramount to assisting families and children to have the best experience possible. So here today, my role is to prayerfully be able to monitor and bring this discussion to life so that each and every person here today can walk away with something that can enhance their family's well-being. Because when you think about it, being a single parent today, I mean, come on, it's one of the most demanding and stressful situations out there. Um, as a single parent, you find yourself dealing with being busy with raising the children, managing your family finances, creating a work life, uh, uh, try to have a balance and, and try to find the supports and things that you need. And I am so impressed that Montgomery College is dedicated and wants to connect with single parent families to, to share the resources and and the things needed, the supports needed to thrive. And today's event is an opportunity for us to discuss, share, and give access to everyone that's here, give them the access to some of those needed supports. So I'm excited to get ready to jump right in, but I wanna announce something that I think is awesome. The first 60 people who stay here and attend this event, you registered, you attend, you do at least 45 minutes with us, guess what? You will receive a total of $30 in Target gift cards just to say thank you. We know it may not be a chain, life changing amount, but the fact that we wanna say thank you for you spending your time today, getting this information and prayerfully putting it into a space that can assist you. So I'm so very excited about that, guys. So as you're here today, make sure you interact. And if you have questions or you 
comments, we're going to ask that you please put them in the Q&A section. For those who may be somewhat unfamiliar with the Zoom platform, it's down in your uh, toolbar, you'll see the word, you'll see the symbol Q&A. You can click that, you can add in any questions that you have, and all of those things will be able to be answered. And if we can't answer them here, I want you to remember that there will be a website where this information will live that you can always go back to. So guys, I don't know if you're ready, but if you're ready, let's get this game started because I get to start off by introducing our keynote speaker to you today. Now, this gentleman, when you read his bio, you, you probably see nothing but success. Um, our keynote speaker today, Mr. Wes Watkins, he's born in Baltimore. I'm in Baltimore right now. I'm right outside of Baltimore. But he was raised in the Severn, Maryland uh, area. And, and when you read his bio, I've, I've been studying this gentleman. Um, he has been so influenced and so influential in the music scene here in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. I, too, am a drummer. Uh, so when I got to hear his, his story, uh, I was just amazed. And when you you think about from the age of seven, he was he was first noticed as one of the one of these talents. You know, guys, when you see these talents, you see these young men growing up, you get excited. People start to take notice to who they are. But. I want people to know that every success has a story of triumph. Every success has a story of overcoming. So I don't want to steal his thunder. He's going to share a, a little bit of his background and what has happened. But today I am honored to be sharing this webinar and being next to actually in, in really proximity on the screen. I'm next to uh, a, a, a true uh, success story from our area. And I want to turn it over to our keynote speaker, none other than Mr. Wes Watkins. Mr. Watkins, how you doing today, brother? Man, I'm doing good, James. How you doing, man? Thank Phenomenal. You <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And uh, hello to everybody out there. Um, thank you all for having me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just want to say thank you for having me, you know. Uh, let's get into it. So again, I'm Wes Watkins. Um, I'm a father of two, a uh, musician, author. I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different uh, artists around the world and record records and all those kind of things. Uh, I have three books out, just came out with my first children's book called Fathers Need the Kids and Kids Need Their Fathers. Um, and like I said, I'm a father to my son, Damar, he's 14. My daughter, Drew, she is three years old. And my baby girl is with me Monday through Friday. And if you are a parent and you have a child, a three-year-old with you all day long, you know it is a lot of fun and adventures. Um, I first just wanna say to all of the parents out there, if you are a single parent, I just want to applaud you. And I just want to tell you, keep doing what you're doing every day. I like to speak positivity over myself. And if you are a parent and you haven't heard it, I just want to let you know that I believe in you. Do not quit. You are seriously making an impact in your child's life, even if you don't see it from your perspective. You are doing an amazing job. And like James said earlier, I know sometimes being a single parent, it could be a lot. Sometimes you carry that financial burden by yourself. You carry all the different burdens by yourself because you're alone. But I just want to tell you to keep pushing, keep going. I believe in you. The things that your 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 uh things that you may look at as failures are not actually failures. They're lessons learned, and they are helping you to move forward in your parenting thing of what you're doing. Uh, just a little backstory on me. Uh, so I love this. Well, first let me just say I love what they're doing here at Montgomery College with the Single Parents Conference. I love it because uh, you get I get to speak to people because I've been through similar things. And um, about 12 years ago, <clears throat> for the first time, uh, my son was about three years old. And me and his mother, shout out to her. That's my friend now. We are good. We are, I think she's on here maybe. But hey, if you're watching, how you doing? But uh, about 12 years ago, for the first time, we went to court. And we had a big situation. And we went to court fighting over my son. And that was probably, probably one of the worst times in my life because um, the situation I was in, it put me in a place of depression, uh, drinking all day, suicide. And we went through this process for about seven to eight months, you know, trying to, we're fighting for custody, we're fighting for custody. And through that whole time, I mean, like I said, it was just one of the worst times of my life. And what we went through during that time, it helped build me into the parent that I am now and helped build her into the parent that she is. And one of the main things I ended up realizing was that everything we went through was because of it was a it was a lack of communication and it wasn't until later on down the road that we spoke in 
we had time to heal from what we were going through that we figured out loud, man, all of this could have been avoided just from simple communication. And so, uh, like I said, we went through court and it literally was, I was probably for about six or seven months, I was just drinking. I mean, like drinking every minute, every second, every hour, because I didn't know how to deal and how to cope with what was going on. And um, as your first child, as a, as a man, when you're not, when you're going through something like that, you couldn't be with your child how you were every day and everything. It just played a lot of tricks on my mind and everything like that. So like I said, man, we, I went through that and we went through the whole alcohol thing. And it wasn't until at, at the end when we started communicating with each other that we found out what was going on. And I'm saying all this because as a single parent, it's important that you're able to get to a place where you can co-parent with the other parent in a mature way. And sometimes it may be hard, you know, and hopefully you have, I know some people may have, a, um, some people may be in a situation where you may not have the other parent there at all. But if you are able to, if you have somebody there, you want to do everything you can to try to co-parent. Um, it took time for us to really build a foundation of and establish a real foundation of communication. For me, I had to get to a place where I had to mature as a parent and as a man. And what I say that is a lot of times we have to check our maturity level as a parent because our lack of maturity as a parent can hinder the way that we co-parent and interact with the other parent. And because if you're the primary parent, sometimes you may feel, oh, it has to be on my terms. I, I have to um, I have to have all the say, so I have to have all the patrol. And sometimes we put another parent in a position where it's uncomfortable for them. And I know me and my son, mother, we did that for the longest time. And we didn't realize the kind of strain that we were putting on our son at the time. And it took us, it took us about six to seven years to really realize what we were doing because we were so, we weren't matured. Even though we were young, we weren't matured as parents. And, uh, and we hadn't dealt with the past hurts. We hadn't dealt with the past situations that happened. And so because you haven't dealt with it, because you don't touch it, you sometimes act like it doesn't exist, but it does exist because it's literally hindering you from working together for the better of the child. And when you're not able to be on the same page, when you're not able to work together, when you're not able to come together to say, you know what, we have to put aside our nonsense because we have to be here for him or be here for her, you really put yourself in a situation where you're actually hindering yourself and hindering uh, your relationship as parents. Um, we found ways to have different uh, healthy arguments. And I call them healthy arguments because a healthy argument is where we can sit down and we can have a disagreement. But I know that from that argument, when we leave that argument, we're still going to leave on good terms. We're not going to leave cussing each other out. We're not going to leave anything unsaid. We're still going to leave as you know what? Okay, you know what? I understand where you're coming from. You understand where I'm coming from. So what do we do? Let's have a healthy argument. Let's not fuss and cuss. Let me sit down and let me hear you out. You can come back and hear me out. And we found that when having these healthy arguments, it made the it made everything so easy for us because now I don't mind hearing you, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't mind hearing you out and what you have to say. You don't mind hearing me out on what I have to say. And at the end of the day, we can still come back to the table. We can go sit down and have dinner, have lunch and say, okay, you know what? This situation, matter of fact, I'm going to give you a, a perfect example. Uh, last September, my son, he um, he was at the beginning of school year. He, he ended up catching COVID. And my son, he, he stays with me um, during the week. So, you know, he had a situation. He caught COVID. He didn't have the shot. And so we were going through, we were just like, man, you know, he got sick. So we're making sure he's cool. And so we had a conversation like, hey, me personally, I was like, hey, I think he needs to get the shot. She like, oh, I don't want the shot because, you know, whatever, I don't, I don't believe in all these other things. And we had this conversation, this argument for literally about two or three days. And so it got to a place where it was just like, okay, what are we going to do then? What is the, what is the solution to the problem? Because we can keep bickering back and forth, but what are we going to do? But in that moment, even though it was something small, but it was something big, we were able to just come to an agreement to say, you know what? Okay. I may not like where your stance is on it, but you know what, as a parent, I respect you. So, okay, let's move forward. We're going to, we're going to go this route. And any 
some of the smallest situations situations can be avoided just by communicating but sometimes we don't like to communicate because we like we we put our ego first you know and especially as a man as as a, as a father you know as a man i gotta sometimes you feel like nah it's going to be my way because you know i'm the i'm the man you know but again i have to take myself out of it and realize that it's not just always about me it's not always just about her we got to make sure that we have peace for our child so what are we going to do we're going to communicate every single time no matter how uncomfortable it is no matter how much you want to say we got to get to a space where we can just have a healthy argument and still come back from it so hope that's something that y'all can take right there uh we got to a place um i also want to talk about as a parent sometimes it is hard for us to parent together and co-parent because we haven't dealt with past hurt and sometimes past hurt for whatever the situation is when it comes to parents we allow our emotions to get the better of us in a co-parenting relationship and that was another thing we had me and my son's mother we sat down and we had to deal with our past hurt because because we hadn't that dealt with past hurt before we were allowing those old emotions to affect the way that we co-parent together and you never want to let an emotion affect the way you co-parent why because a temporary you never want to allow a temporary situation you never want an, a temporary emotion to get you to a place where you say or do something that has a permanent hold that you can't come back from sometimes in the midst of arguments we can say and do things that are out of emotion but sometimes you may cross a line that you can never come back from and sometimes we don't understand how that may affect a person and so i've, I've had the opportunity to have conversations with different people um I have friends and I have different conversations. We always have these talks, especially with a lot of men that I know. We have these talks of, uh, man, we're like, what's going on? How come you don't, uh, what's the word? How, how can I say this? You have a conversation that's like, man, I can't, I, I can't be around to parent the way I want to because this, she says this or he does this and it makes me feel like, if I say or do something, I'm going to go above and beyond. And now I'm in a position where I can't see my child at all. And we don't understand how a lot of our words can cut and words can hurt. The power of life and death is in our tongue. And sometimes we speak death over our situations, not meaning actual death, but we speak death over our situations. And we don't understand how those words affect a person and especially a person that you have to deal with for the next 18 years. So you have to condition your mind. You have to watch what you say. You have to watch how you say it. You have to watch what you do and how you do it because the, the one thing that you think that you're doing out of emotion can actually cause the next person to, 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 to bring themselves back and not want to deal with you or the situation you may have with a child. And it's, and it's, it's sad because I know some people that are in that situation. And the, the main thing it goes back to is that people don't want to communicate. Still, we we haven't dealt with forgiveness. We haven't we haven't got to a place where we where we can forgive. We haven't got to a place where we could deal with hurt. You haven't got to a place where you could say, you know what, I have to be the bigger person. And sometimes you don't want to be the bigger person. Sometimes you don't want to say, I'm sorry, even if you're in the right. Sometimes you don't want to give that person the day of time to say, you know what, how do we move forward? But when you're facing the 18 year bid with you and, the, and, the, and another parent and you have a child, you got to get to that place. You have to get to that healthy space. You want your child to always be in a place where I know that my mom and my dad, they have my back. I, we, me and my son, we make it a point to know, we make it a point that my son, Damar, he always knows that whether I go to my mom's house or whether I go to my dad's house, I know they're on the same page, whether it's a punishment whether it's home, whatever it is, he knows that we are on the same page 24 seven. Why? Because we make sure that we got, <clears throat> excuse me. We make sure that we got to a place where we dealt with the hurt. We make sure we got to a place where we dealt with forgiveness. We make sure we got to a place where we could deal and have a healthy and have healthy communication, no matter what, excuse me, I need some water real quick. <clears throat> my bad, going to my notes. Um, the other thing that we have to do is uh make sure that make sure that even um as co-parents that we hold on, i'm sorry make sure that as co-parents that when you're communicating make sure that you don't mind 
being the, the parent that doesn't get the, the final say so. It's okay. It's no problem. That has been a big factor that I've noticed. A lot of people, they don't want to co-parent because I can't always say yes or I can't be the per. You have to come to that middle ground. You have to come to that place where it's just, we are okay. I can say, I got you and you got me and we are good to go. I hope I hope what I'm saying so far is, I hope you're uh, able to take notes. I hope it's, it's, it's coming through because these are just things that prepare me for what I'm going through now. And so in my situation, I have two kids by two different women. So there are two different people. There are two different uh, attitudes. There are two different people in general that I had to deal with. But because of what I went through before, it prepared me of how to act with my daughter's mom. And everything is going to be a process. The one thing I understand about as a parent, as a single parent, as co-parenting, everything is going to be a process. It's not going to be an overnight process that everything is just back to normal, that it's, it's smooth sailing. The thing that I, I understand and thing that I like, you think about everything that you've gone through in your life, everything that you've been through in the past, it's built you for who you are now. A lot of things that we don't want to look at or look back at, it actually helped build you to the person you are now, to the parent you are right now. So you can't always, don't always look at everything as a negative. Change your perspective in your situation. Change your perspective as a parent. One thing that I like is that when me and my son, we went through the whole court and I went through the, I went through the alcohol, uh, alcoholism and I went through the suicide attempts and I went through all of those things. At first, I was ashamed of them because it's like, oh man, you know, you never want to be in a place. I was, I was torn at the time. People thinking, oh man, you, you, you're going around the world, you're living life. You, nah, I'm hurt inside. But I never thought that I would get to a place where I was ashamed at first until I actually changed my perspective on it. Now I don't mind talking about it openly. Why? Because those things prepared me to be the father I am now. It prepared me to have conversations like this with people who are in similar situations. It prepared me to be, it prepared me to, to, to gain the patience that I have. My patience is, it's crazy. <laughs> you have to have patience with your, with your co-parent, you know what I'm saying? And all of those things helped build me to the father that I am today. I don't look back at it. It's not a negative. It's a positive. Why? Because it taught me how to be who I am. And you have to look at it and say, okay, I went through all of this hell before, but what did I learn from that hell that I went through? How do I apply that to my now? How do I apply that to my next? How do I take this and move forward? Because the thing, you can take a lot of that stuff and not just apply as a person, but apply it as a parent and apply it to all areas of your life. I get to have conversations with my son. Me and my son have some of the deepest conversations because I let him in and now I get to prepare him. Hey man, you might, this is what suicide looks like. Dad went through this. This is what depression looked like. Dad went through this. I now have conversation pieces that I can help him with just in case he may encounter some of the same things in his, in his life. And not only that, I learned that in situations when you go through, especially as co-parents when, and if you have, uh, if you have more than one, parent, uh, if you have more than one person as your, your kids, you know, parents and stuff like that, it helps you to know how to navigate through that, except what's gone, which, what you've been through. That doesn't mean that that becomes your identity. Just because what I went through in my past, that doesn't mean that that defines me. It just means that I know how to learn from it and I know how to use that so that I can grow and I can go. Everything you went through doesn't have to stay on you. Understand your purpose, understand your why as a parent, understand your why as a person of who you are and what you were purposed to do. I was purposed to make an impact. So I'm going to make an impact in my kid's life. So that means going through the, having uncomfortable conversations, having, um, talking about the things that I thought made me ashamed, but it really just built me up to be the person I am and, and, and the co-parent that I am. Making sure that you stay motivated as a parent, making sure that you still keep going, that you still keep pushing, that you don't stop, you don't quit, you don't give up, you don't allow things that have gone on uh, in your past, you don't allow that to define you. You don't allow that to define you as a parent. Understand that you're going to make mistakes. Understand that situations are going to come. Understand that things are going to happen that seem uneasy but you have this, you have to keep pushing. You have to make sure that you stay with communication. You have to make sure that you keep uh, pushing the agenda to make sure you look at your, your situation in the positive. 
a lot of times as parents, you will run into situations where sometimes um, what we say, uh, we, we look at a lot of things as negative that you may be by yourself, but also look at what's that, what that is building you to be, who that is building you to become as a parent, as a leader of your household, as the leader of your children, of your child. Everything that you're going through, it is all to build you. I just want to make sure that y'all know that you do not stop. You do not allow that to hinder you from being the best parent you can be. Am I going over time or am I still good? I just want to make sure. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, sorry, I just, said, I just saw the caption come up. I had to make sure I was going over time. <laughs> but yes, but like I said, but that is one of the one of the uh, the main things you could do is you just have to stay there. You have to communicate. Be willing to um, be willing to. What's the word I'm looking for? I just lost my train of thought. I'm sorry, but just make sure as a parent that you are willing to communicate. Co-parenting is one of the best things you could do when you get to a place when everybody doesn't have any uh, any 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 hard feelings to each other. It is one of the best feelings. The fact that I get to co-parent with two amazing people uh, in my situation is good. You're going to have your good times. You're going to have your bad times. Trust me, you're going to have times where you want to pull your hair out. And as you see, I'm bald. I don't have no more hair to pull out. So you are going to, you may look like this, but even when you look like that, you still have to look at the positive. You, get, you still have to find the positive and the negative. I, I made sure that everything I, I look, the way I look at my situation is that everything that I've been through, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be, you know, I'm supposed to be their dad. I'm so, I was in this situation. Why? Because I was built for it. I was prepared for it. I think about all the hurt. Uh, even before I went through the court situation with my, with my son's mom, I went through suicide attempts then. That suicide built me. I tried to take my life out five times and I'm still here. It built me to who I am. I I stopped drinking heavy. I stopped abusing liquor. It built me to the man I am now. I made sure that I took all those negatives and I found the positive in it. How do I grow from here? How do I become the father that I need to become? I'm going to make sure I do everything in my power to be there for my kids. And that's the same thing I'm trying to encourage you to do to make sure that you are doing. Keep pushing. Take those past things that happened to you and keep moving forward. It doesn't break you. It may have break, it may have broken you, but it didn't destroy you. So I just want to say, man, keep doing what y'all are doing. You are a great parent. I believe in you. I hope that whatever situation you're going through, that you are able to make it through, stay prayed up. I believe in you and I love y'all so much. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Wow, Wes. Um, your your bio, your doesn't even do justice to what you just brought to all of us. And and wow. sir, I gotta jump right in and because the, the QA is popping, as the young <laughs> people would say. But um, you know, you, you made so many points and I got so many things I want to get out, but I do you said a few things about how how it looked how people res were responding to you. And one of the first questions that came up from our audience, I'm not even gonna go into some questions that I thought of. I wanna mm -hmm. go into what they said, how did your family and friends respond to your positive co-parenting relationship? Um, they, resp they respond in a great way. Like I said, it took, it took a long time, especially for me and my son mother to get there. We were young, we were uh, 21 when we had them. So it literally, so, you know, when you're young, it's your first child, you, you go through a lot. And so it took us almost 12 years to get to the place. No, I'm sorry. It took us about 10 years to get to the place where we're at now. And um, we got one of the greatest responses. Like we have so much support. And I think um, the biggest, the biggest takeaway was my son. You can see my son, like when we, when me and her really got on the same page, you can see the change in him. You know, so it was like that thing of my parents, they really, they really got it now, you know, and because everybody knew me and her background of when I say it was bad, it was literally, I hate you, you hate me, F you, F me, I see you in court another year, we need to go, it, it, it was on that tight term, so to be able to get to a place where I can call her my friend now, you know, it, yes, like that's, that's my actual friend, and for the first time, Last year, me and her took a picture with our son ever in his life for the first time. Yes, like 
two, three years ago, we, three years ago, we did for the first time in his life, we threw a birthday party together for him for the first time. So that right there itself was rewarding and everybody see it. And so everybody loves it. And, you know, I, we always get the question from some of my friends, like, man, how do you do it? Man, process. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah, yeah. God and process and a lot of prayer. <laughs> man, you, you, you know, um, and it, it's, it's so funny, Wes, you, you, you just put a timeline on the process. Right. And, and, you know, so many times, just like when you read your bio, mm -hmm. you see this amazing ending story, but you don't know the timeline and the work that it takes to get there. And you, you, you definitely said some things like healthy argument. <laughs> I've been married 27 years. <laughs> I need that concept from you, bro. But, <laughs> but there was another question. Because it's in that time frame that you, you you know went from we we just saying whatever to each other to now we call each other friends. Someone asked the question, how do you communicate with someone who is withdrawn, who does not want to communicate with you? What what is it that keeps you fighting to try to have a conversation? And you know, so far I literally meant to mention that when I was speaking, but this is good. So Honestly, it's, it's I, I, how can I say it? You just got to be consistent. Mm. So re regardless if you don't want to, and sometimes it can feel like you're, you're speaking to a wall. It, it can feel like that. And sometimes you feel dumb when you keep saying stuff. It's going to, like I said, and that's why, that's why I don't put time limits on things because it's process. Process isn't easy. And it, sometimes process can be frustrating because, at times we want to, when we want to communicate, we want them to respond when we want them to respond, how we want them to. And it's not going to always be like that. So sometimes it, it has to, you have to see how consistent can I be? Now, I'm not saying you got to do it for a lifetime because at the end of the day, you can't make somebody communicate who doesn't want to. But the way that I ended up, I got to a place uh, where I said, you know what? I had got to a place, I was being consistent and everything. And then I got to a place, I said, you know what? I need my peace. If you don't want to communicate, I, I can't make you. All I can do is what I can do as a parent. That's it. So I can't, I, I, I really can't um, keep beating myself up in the head to try to get you on board because right now I'm here. I don't have a problem with you. You know, that's, that's how you have to look at it as a parent. Like, I, listen, I don't have a problem with you. You may still be holding on to some stuff that happened or whatever like that. I'm just trying to make sure that we we just in a good, healthy space for the child. Now, if you don't want to talk, okay, cool. But the thing is, I think it just depends on the person of, that's why I said for me, my patience grew because of what me and my son's mother went through. So my patience, honestly, I don't meet a lot of people that have the kind of patience I have. Like, I will literally sit there and say, okay, cool. I'll keep talking to you for all day and forever. You know, because I'm, I'm, just, I'm just okay like that. So it just really just depends on the person. Like, you really have to say, how patient am I going to be with this situation and how consistent am I going to be? Wow. You know, you're not going to have the patience or the consistency that you don't already defeated yourself right there. Wow. Um, Wes, I tell you that the questions of man, you, you, th this could go on all day. I could just see this because <laughs> the questions are coming up and, and you're getting, a, I'm telling you this, you're, you're hitting messages. If you could just see the, 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 the comments, well, you know, oh, yeah. Very well needed. Thank you so much. But I want to wrap up because we, we got a, uh, about a minute. I want to wrap this last question into to one big one because okay. the lack of communication, someone asked about that. Others asked about, you know, getting to this point. But in this last minute, wrap up. How do you personally deal with the past hurts mm -hmm. so that you can mature, as you said, you can be the person willing to look for peace and willing to communicate. So wrap us up with, try to say, how do we get past the hurt? Um, honestly, it's a thing of, you have to forgive yourself and you have to be willing to forgive the other person. And so um, that was one of, that was one of the ways that I got, that I got past the hurt. And it's not always forgiving a person for them. It's literally forgive. Like we hear that, like you literally do have to forgive for yourself because you have to be at peace and understanding that, your situation is not, nothing that we do is going to be perfect. And so when I understood that, I was able, like, 
when me and my son mother, when we sat down and we talked for the first time, I had to forgive it. And I'm not going to lie. In my mind, I felt I was stupid because I was like, why am I doing this? But then I thought about it. It's not for her. It's for me to make sure that I can move forward because sometimes when we don't forgive a person, no matter what it is, that person be done moved on, but we still stuck back here. Mm-hmm. Now you sitting here blocking your blessings, you blocking the person you can't, that you're supposed to become, but you can't become the person because you're still holding on to certain things. And your mindset is not free because a situation still has a hold of you. So it's like, you have to get to a place where you understand that life, number one, life is going to happen. People are not perfect. And that's the one thing I learned. Like, I don't put judgment on anybody because people are not perfect. I'm not perfect. You talk to a dude, try to take himself out five times. I almost left this earth, almost left my son fatherless five times. You know what I'm saying? And I had to go back and forgive myself. I had to ask my son for forgiveness when he got old enough. And I had the conversation with him because it was messing with me as a man and as a father. So when you get to a place where you can forgive and you can go back and you have to really, you have to really go back and trace the root of what happened and deal with it. Once you deal with it, you live in, you, you really get into a space and a place of freedom. And it's one of the best things. Like my past situations don't have a hold on me. That right there freed me up to be who I am. And so it helps me to move forward in a healthy way. It helps me to be the West I am now, you know what I'm saying? And it changes your perspective on life. So you literally have to go back and forgive. And once you're able to forgive yourself, it makes it easier for you to be able to forgive the next person. And once you do that, man, Mm. sky's the limit. Wes, first of all, um, I I just, the the Q and A, I gotta say to every person out there that's communicating with us, I know we could talk to him forever. I, I see it, but <laughs> we gotta we gotta wrap this up. And I want to say to you, Wes, thank you one for allowing us to see a snippet of your journey, thank and you. to let us all know that all the glitz and glamour, the fame and success, the money and all of that is cute. But if you're hurting inside, if you're struggling inside, it means nothing. Okay. So I, I thank you for your honesty. I thank you for what you've given today. I thank you for who you are. And congratulations to those children and the ladies that have created children with you. Because they got a real man supporting that process. So ladies and gentlemen, let's just uh, on a, a, a virtual warm round of applause for Wes being with us today. Thank you, Wes. I really appreciate you. I appreciate y'all for having me. Thank you so much.